So, what on earth are online communities and why should you care? Let's dig in. Alrighty, welcome. I hope you're safe and well. This is Jono. Now, in this video, I want to give you a really solid primer on online communities. So I'm going to walk through what communities are, what the benefits members get out of them, uh, why businesses and other people should build communities and what they get out of them. I'm going to walk through the overall structure of a community, the common ingredients in great communities, share some good examples of communities, and then also give you a pointer on how to get started in building a community if you so care to do so. Okay, if you so care to do so, does that make any sense? Probably not. All right, so let's start out with the problem that communities are generally here to solve. And I want to break this into kind of business and product communities as well as kind of hobbyist and interest-based communities as well. So 20, 20 or 30 years ago, if you had a particular problem with a product that you bought from the business, what you generally do is you'd call their 1-800 number. Some free number, maybe different in your country if you're not in America, but you'd call the number and then they generally walk through how to solve that particular problem. Now, companies generally didn't have much of a relationship with their customers and this was part of the problem back then. But as the internet happened and more and more people were getting email addresses, companies then realized that they could start sending emails to people. But again, this was largely kind of a broadcast mechanism. They transmit information out to their customers and the customers would sometimes read them and in many cases they wouldn't read anything okay but then as kind of twitter formed and facebook and instagram all of these different social media networks the world changed a little bit people were growing up with social technology and interactive technology medium so people have expected to have a much more interactive experience with the companies that they care about now let's talk about uh, interests and problem solving okay so let's say Years ago, you were interested in building a skill or a level of expertise, you typically go out and you buy a book, okay? And this book would guide you through how to do something and how to achieve that particular outcome. But then as the internet happened, okay, people started blogging, okay? And then the world experienced so much more information from different voices. No longer did you have to be published by a particular book publisher to be able to get your message out there. So this was great, but again, it was kind of a one-way relationship between the content creator or the blogger and the person who was consuming the content. But then again, as social media happened, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of these different networks as they happened, people wanting a much more interactive experience, not just with content creators, but also with the people who were also consuming the content. Now, so all of this down here, all of this kind of interactive kind of technology fueled online communities. Sure, there were pockets of online communities around years ago, but online communities have exploded in interest. And part of the reason is that we are fundamentally a social species. We like to spend time with each other. We like to share and learn from each other, okay? It's one of the reasons why thousands of years ago, we used to form together into communities in, in you know, in villages near rivers so we could kind of hunt and gather and, and survive better together, okay? So if you think about what a community really is, it's basically just a group of individuals, okay? So this is a group of individuals, okay? But if you're an individual, you've got all kinds of expertise and insight and knowledge and, and, and you've had failures and you've had successes and you've got time available to you in different ways. If you're just by yourself, you've only got the benefit of what you know. But let's say you connect with somebody else but then you've got the benefit of that other person's experience, their insights, their expertise, their knowledge. They can, they can counteract your experiences and you can kind of learn new things from them. If you bring another person into a mix, now you've got three people, you've got three sets of knowledge, three sets of expertise, three sets of experiences, three sets of time to potentially do things, okay? When you apply this en masse to lots and lots of people, this is when you get a community, right? A community is fundamentally, it's a network of minds and they're all glued together with all of this insight and expertise and experience. And when you get all of that insight and expertise and experience out of somebody's head into a shared medium, then we all get to learn from each other. We all get to grow. We all get to solve our problems more quickly and more efficiently. And this is one of the reasons why communities have become so successful. Now, many companies have built amazing communities. You've got, for example, Fitbit, okay? They've got a community of over, two million members who come together, they don't just talk about Fitbit bands and technology, they talk about swimming and intermittent fasting and running more effectively, getting a better stride, how to eat healthier, okay? It's the outcome that they want in the Fitbit community that people care about. It's not just about the technology that Fitbit's selling. You've got Harley Davidson, okay? Harley Davidson have got thousands um, of local user groups all over the world where people get together to talk about their bikes. You've got Sephora, 
which has built an amazing community of millions of people who are passionate about beauty and makeup and looking good. And they learn and share from each other about which products to use and how to kind of apply them in the, in the most effective way. You've got Hit Record. You know, this was founded by the Emmy Award winning actor Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who actually contributed some content to my book, People Powered. He built this amazing community where artists and writers and musicians kind of come together and they work in shared productions, shared creative works, many of which have been showcased at Sundance. You've got the open source community, okay? And this is where people have been building technology together. The software that's running on that computer, that's running on that camera, that's running on my phone down there, that's running on my guitar processor over there, much of it is written in open source. It's meant that we've been able to come together to build technology more efficiently and effectively. And open source really is controlling and dominating the world right now. It's, it's super popular, okay? Another example is Lego Ideas. Okay, this is where people who love Lego have come up with ideas for Lego sets and in many cases the Lego team have actually built them and put them into action. Okay, so this notion of bringing people together and, and bringing all of our ideas and expertise and insight out into a shared space is very popular and very, very effective. And it's becoming more popular because people are growing up with social technology, as I mentioned earlier on. Okay, now fundamentally, when it comes to communities, there's benefits for members, okay, Oh, not members. You see, this is one of the problems with me having this bloody whiteboard table is I can't actually write, okay? If you've been watching my YouTube videos, um, this is a common thing, okay? So you've got benefits for members and then you've got benefits for businesses, right? Or the people who are building businesses. Did I spell that right? People who are building uh, the communities in question, okay? So let's walk through each of these. Let's walk through the benefits for members and then the benefits for businesses. Now for members, let's say we're talking about, let's say for the sake of example, you, you've got a company and you've got a product that helps you to create graphics online. Something like Shoto, Photoshop, like Shotofop. Photoshop or Canva, something along those lines, okay? So there's many benefits for your members of your community who kind of come in, okay? One is gonna be problem solving, right? So if you don't know how to use a particular feature in, in that tool, if you're trying to achieve a particular outcome or you don't know how to design YouTube thumbnails or something along those lines, you can go into a community, you'll meet other people who'll be able to help you solve that particular problem. Another example of a benefit is growing skills. You know, when you first start using a new product, you don't know how to use it, right? But as you, as you read the documentation and watch videos and go and ask questions, and you can ask questions in a community about your specific issues and people can help you, then you develop your skills, you get more value out of the product, which is what the business wants, okay? Another benefit is content, is that communities are an amazing source of content. They're a place where people not only just have conversations and discussions, but many communities will create blog posts and videos. They'll do Zoom sessions, they'll do meetups, they'll do webinars. They'll create amazing content that benefits each other in the community, okay? If you're interested in building content and delivering amazing content, check out the link in the video description because I've actually built a complete training course which shows you how to spin up a complete content strategy really simply and easily, okay? Another great benefit of communities for members is networking, okay? I don't mean plugging ethernet cables into computers, I mean meeting other people, getting to know them. You know, it's super rewarding when, you've, when you're meeting people who've got a similar set of interests or a similar set of problems that you've got, it becomes kind of a support group where you can help each other out and you can learn from each other, you can get to know each other, you can meet people from all over the world in different businesses and different industries from different walks of life. It's incredibly rewarding, it's the networking that keeps people coming back because they feel a sense of belonging, they feel like they've got to know the group and then they feel part of the group, okay? Another benefit is collaboration, okay? Many communities will actually work together to create things that benefit the broader community. So let's say for the sake of argument with this example of, you know, a kind of a, a photo editor or a paint program that's available in your browser, let's say people are struggling with figuring out the right kind of color palettes for their, for their artwork, okay? Well, maybe the community could kind of come together and build a recipe book or, a, or an ebook or a collection of videos or tutorials or training materials that will help the community to be more successful in using that technology. They'll do things in many cases that the business doesn't have time to do or is not interested in investing in, okay? And then another reason why people love communities is because they're fun. You know, we often talk about all of this formal, you know, structured, organized stuff, but just going somewhere and hanging out with people that you like is awesome. It's one of the reasons why I love the pub. I love going down to the pub. It's not just the gin and the beer and occasionally the tequila that I love. 
It's the fact that I get to go and see my friends. I get to meet new people. I get to have interesting and fun conversations. It's just enjoyable. And people love that in communities, okay? So problem solving, growing skills, content, networking, collaboration, fun, lots of benefits for your members. But what about the business? What about the people who are building these communities? And if you're not a business, if you want to build an activism community, or you just want to build a, a group because you know, wanna, you're interested in a particular author or a particular movies or whatever, this would apply there as well, okay? So the first is going to be, customer engagement okay this is obviously very specific on, on business engagement so you know if you if back in the old days where people would call the phone number when they had issues with the business there wasn't a lot of customer engagement between the businesses and their customers but in a community in a shared space where your customers are hanging out this is where your staff can hang out you can get to know them you can build relationships with your customers and that's what people want that's what people want in this modern age of growing up with social technology they don't want to just read your marketing materials they want to meet your team have conversations with your team get to know your team okay so customer engagement is amazing another great benefit is support you know one of the biggest cost centers of businesses is that they have to have a support team to solve particular problems or a customer success team but when you've got this amazing new resource of community members coming together to help each other out then it lowers your support costs it lowers your customer engagement costs okay product feedback is another great benefit okay one of the biggest challenges that businesses face oh, feedback is you know They've got a billion things that their customers want. They don't know how to prioritize them. Well, your community becomes this amazing source of data and knowledge about what people are actually using, how they're using your software or how they're using your product and how they can get the most out of it, okay? And when you enable people to provide that product feedback inside of your community and then you actually build those products, that makes your customers feel really great as well, okay? Another one here is brand loyalty. So... One of the great benefits of communities is that it narrows the gap between you as a business and your customers, okay? And when people have a really genuinely, um, a genuine engaging relationship with brands, they love that. They tell their friends, they tell their colleagues, they tell their workmates, okay? That's what builds brand loyalty. In the same way that I'm a big fan of a platform called ConvertKit, right? And it's an email automation platform. I use it an awful lot. Whenever I engage with the ConvertKit team, they're always super engaged and they provide me with great guidance. They've got great content. I love it. And that's one of the reasons why I've stuck with them as, as, as a product. There's lots of their competitors out there, but I love what they do, okay? And then another final benefit that I'm gonna list here, and then I'm gonna move on, is hiring. Is that if you need to grow a business and you've got a community of people who are hanging out with each other, they're prime candidates. If you need to hire, for example, a great artist who knows your community, knows your product, knows your design, the senior design over and over again, well, it's probably gonna be easier to find a good person for that role inside of the community than outside of it. That certainly applies to engineers and various other people. In fact, years ago, when I used to run the community at Canonical for the Ubuntu project, one of the problems I had is that the company kept hiring community members. So I had to, kept, I had to keep working to keep bringing new people into the community because they'd be hired from the community into the company, okay? So lots of amazing benefits. Uh, both on the members and the business side. Now, what I want to talk about now, you know, hopefully this will give you a sense of, of what communities look like, but let's talk about what they typically look like on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So the first consideration here is choosing a platform, okay? So community is a shared space where lots of people kind of go into, okay? So you'll have, let's say, uh, your, your customers or your users over here. So, you, you know, using the example of the online paint program, you know, you'll have all of these kind of folks out there and they all kind of come into this, this shared space, okay? These are my terrible arrows because I'm trying to draw quickly, okay? But you'll also have, you know, your, your employees if you're running a business kind of coming in, okay? And then you may also have, well, this is very common, you may have kind of onlookers, people who are evaluating your product to your service or if you've got a more of an interest-based community, people who share that kind of interest. So you want to get everybody into the same space. Now, in terms of what this space is, it can be a chat channel, it can be a forum, it could be a Facebook group, it could be a LinkedIn group, okay? There's lots of considerations in terms of what kind of community platform you use. I don't really have the time to cover in that right now, but if you go and check out the video description, I do have a link to a video that I put out which walks through how to go about building a community in six steps, and I talk about how to make that decision in that video, okay? So you choose a platform, you have one place that people are gonna to come to, okay? Now, the first kind of content that you're gonna have inside of your community is gonna be discussion, okay? This is gonna be people who are gonna kind of come in, 
and they're going to talk about things, okay? And this is probably what you, if you've ever seen an online community, this is probably what you think of, lots and lots of conversations. Now, what's amazing about discussion in a community is that you benefit from all of that insight and expertise that I talked about that's in your, uh, in your community's heads and you get it out into the shared space and people can learn from each other. It's a very collaborative environment, okay? So good discussions. You wanna facilitate, facilitate lots of really good discussions that kind of keep people coming back, keep them interested, keep them engaged, and that's a great way to build your community. But this, this is where a lot of people make mistakes with the communities. They only do that. Okay, and just coming back for the discussions isn't going to cut it. Okay, you've got to give people another reason to come back. Okay, and this is where we start talking about content. Okay, you want to make sure that you've got a regular stream of content that goes into your community. And the best communities in the world have a regular stream. It could be blogging, it could be YouTube, it could be podcasts, it could be webinars. But there's something that keeps bringing people back in because they're interested in consuming that content. And then they've got amazing content and amazing discussions as well. So again, if you're interested in building an awesome kind of content strategy across webinars, social media, email, blogging, podcasting, I've built this complete course. You can check the link in the video description down there that walks through how to do it. It doesn't just talk about how to create content, it's how to spin up an editorial calendar, how to promote it, how to repurpose it, how to measure it, all that kind of good stuff as well. So if you have good content and good discussion, you're well on the way to building a great community. And then the final point here, which is really important, are incentives, okay? Is you gotta recognize people when they come into your community. So let's say somebody comes in and they post something for the very first time, okay? Give them a reward or, or, or a badge or some recognition. Let's say they answer somebody's question, okay? Recognize that. Let's say you want people to come and speak at some community events on Zoom, say. Well, when the first time they come and register and go and speak at an event, give them a reward, recognize them. Let's say you want somebody to create blog posts for you. Well, give them a reward, go and recognize them. So when you have great conversation, great content and you recognize the good contributions to the community that you get with incentives, that's when you start getting amazing communities. And this kind of neatly takes me into kind of the final section of this video, which is what are the attributes of really amazing communities? Because I'm going to be honest with you, there is a lot, there are rather, there are a lot of shit communities out there. There's a lot of terrible communities out there. Just boring, nauseatingly dull or empty ghost towns just sitting there on the internet gathering dust. You don't want that, you're better than that. You're watching this video. You're on my side now, and I wanna take care of you, okay? So what I wanna talk about is what are the, what are the kind of good ingredients of, of great communities? Like, what should we be looking for? So if you're interested in building a community, what are the things that you should be paying attention to, okay? Well, the first one here is you've gotta offer clear value. Okay, here's the thing. Having a forum, a chat channel, a Facebook group, whatever, just available isn't enough for people to come and join your community, okay? If you build it, they will come, doesn't work, okay? But you've gotta be able to say, if you come to our community, you're gonna be able to get all of these benefits out of that, okay? So make sure that you know who your audience are, what they typically are gonna care about, and give them a reason to come back. That's that great content, lots of great discussion, incentivizing and rewarding them. If you've got that, people are gonna come back. The second ingredient is simple access, okay? Can't write the word access. If it's too complicated to figure out how to get started, then they're not gonna join, okay? So you've gotta make sure that your community platform is really simple, that it's easy to sign up for an account, it's easy to find information, that the information is well organized. And when they come in here, they can get up and running quickly and easily, that it, it doesn't feel like a nerve wracking, you know, Mount Everest to climb to try and get started in the community. So it's clear value and a simple way to get started. Make this as simple as possible. Too many communities try to overcomplicate this and make it too snazzy and too, you know, there's too many steps to jump through. For example, if you're gonna have someone to sign up for an account, you want their first name and their email address. That's it. Don't ask for their role, their industry, their address, their phone number, asking them to opt in or opt out of all of these different mailing lists. No, just get the core basics reduce the friction, get them simple access, okay? The third one here, in terms of great communities, is great content. Too many communities, as I mentioned earlier on, only focus on discussion. Have a regular stream of amazing content that you can use 
to keep luring people back in, okay? It's kind of like, think of it as fishing, is that what you're doing is you're dangling all of these amazing pieces of content into the lake, and then people want to kind of see it. They're going to keep coming back to that area, just like fish will do. Never drawn a connection between a fish and content before, so there we go. Actually, I feel like drawing a connection between a fish. There we go. And content. That's a blog post. There we go. We've officially drawn a connection between a fish and a blog post. What a random moment that was. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next one is engaging discussion. Okay. So make sure that the conversations that you're having, that you're kicking off, are really interesting. So for example, one of the things I have to recommend to my clients is, um, is that you have a, a, a conversation starter where you say, hey, what are your favorite TED Talks? Right? Now you may say, I like this particular TED Talk. Let's say it's... Um, you know, Confessions of an Ad Man, right? Um, which I, I think is a great talk on, on behavioral economics, okay? Well, other people are gonna come in and say, well, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one, and you get all these YouTube links posted in there. Now that conversation, all those discussions combined together has got maybe 20 amazing TED Talks that you can then go and watch. So that kind of discussion is really great, okay? Two more. You wanna make sure that your community is inclusive, okay? Now, to me, this is table stakes. You need to make sure that your community is safe and equitable for everybody. It shouldn't matter what the color of somebody's skin is, their sexuality, where they're from, you know, what their background is. If they can bring something of interest to the community, if they can take uh, interesting, exciting material out of the community and it can benefit them, then they should be welcome, okay? So never accept people who are homophobic or racist or sexist, any of that junk, okay? And make sure that it's a really simple, safe environment for everybody, okay? And then the final one here, and this is really critical, is that your community evolves, okay? And what I mean by this is that the best communities in the world make their community members feel like they're able to improve and optimize the community. If you join a community and it was founded by Joe Bloggs, right? And then only Joe Bloggs gets to decide what happens in the community and the rules and what kind of content people discuss, then nobody's gonna wanna be around that because it's a bit of a di dictatorship. But if Joe Bloggs is saying to everybody, hey, you know, we've got all these amazing ideas of what we can do in the community. We'd love to hear your ideas. And then Josephine blogs, Joe's sister says, well, wouldn't it be cool if we started doing some Zoom sessions? Wouldn't it be cool if we started uh, maybe running some online meetups? Wouldn't it be cool if we maybe created a wiki and had some eBooks that we were working together on? When you enable your community members to evolve the community, it makes it feel enabled. It makes it feel inclusive. It makes it feel that it's that everybody feels a greater sense of ownership in terms of what they can do. So anyway, so that gives you a bit of a, a sense of how to, you know, what an online community is and why they're pretty cool and why so many people are building communities. If you're interested in building your own community, then check out the link in the video description down there where I walk through how to build a community in six steps. Okay, so that's it. Hope this was useful. If you like this video, hit that like button. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and of course, tap that little notification bell and I will see you on the other side. Peace out.